how to build a winning portfolio. Hey friends, what's up? My name is Preston and I'm excited to be your new guide to the world of investing. Now don't worry, I won't bore you with any complicated jargon or mathematical equations. Instead, I'll be sharing some simple tips and tricks that anyone can follow easily. So now, if you are ready to learn how to grow your money, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below and join me on this investing journey. Okay, so let's get right down to today's topic, how to build a winning portfolio. Now, let me share a bit of my current portfolio allocation. Now, as of today, my portfolio is around US 275,000, all right? And it consists of cash, which is about 38%, stocks, 34%, and exchange-traded funds, which is about 28%. Now, earlier in 2023, my stocks used to take up about 65%, but I invested more into ETFs, and then I added a bit more of cash, to sell options and collect premiums. So therefore, my stock is slightly lower, about 34%. And breaking it down into stocks, so generally my stock is about 5 to 15%. Now I do have some slightly higher, which is about 17 to 18%, but it's because these stocks have gained in capital value. And that is why there's a slightly higher percentage. Breaking down into how to build a solid investment portfolio. Now, building a solid investment portfolio requires careful considerations of various factors, such as your investment goals, risk tolerance, time horizon, and of course portfolio allocation. Now here are some things you need to take note. Number one, investment goals. Now your investment goals will have a heavy influence on the type of investment that you choose. For example, if you're looking more towards fast growth and high capital appreciation, you may consider small to medium cap companies that have a high earnings growth for the last five years. Now, if you prefer a slower but steadier growth, which means lower risk as well, you can consider S&P 500 ETFs such as VOO or perhaps big cap companies and as well companies that pay dividends. And of course, if you have no time to analyze companies, you can also just consider investing in ETFs or doing dollar cost averaging. Number two, risk tolerance. It's a very important factor because different people at different ages of their lives may have different risk tolerance. Now, a young adult who's doing good in his career may opt for higher risk and more gains. Higher risk investments when looking at fast growth stocks, which is the small and medium cap companies. Now, the older generation may opt for lower risk, but lesser gains. So, slow growth companies, big cap stocks, ETFs, or perhaps bonds. Now, for me, personally, I take a more balanced approach. It's a mix of high growth and medium growth companies, as well as ETFs as well. Well, I balance my portfolio in a way that it's not too risky, that I may lose a substantial portion of my capital. At the same time, it's not too safe that the returns I earn are very low. Number three, time horizon. Now, time horizon means the length of time you plan to invest your money. Now, having a longer time horizon means that you have more time to ride out the market fluctuations, and you also can take more risks. For example, for myself, I started out about 10 years ago, so that is a long time horizon. I have more time to weather the downs of the market, enjoy higher capital gains over the long run. But if my time horizon was shorter, I would probably have to sell stocks sooner, you know, that those that aren't making money, and thus do not have the time for the company to grow, and therefore missing out on the earnings once the company does better. Number four, portfolio allocation. Now you've probably heard of this famous phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now this is a very important philosophy in building your portfolio. Now, imagine if your portfolio entirely consists of stocks in the IT or the tech sector. Sure, when there's a bull market, or if the tech sector is doing really well, you'll make a good amount of money. But when the market corrects, now this is the time where you can lose all the gains you have made. Now that is exactly what happened to me in 2020 to 2021. So therefore for stocks, I, my recommendation is actually to limit a certain stock in a certain industry to probably maybe 5% or at the max 10% of the portfolio. Number five, rebalancing. Now rebalancing means to periodically adjust and rebalance your investment portfolio. Now this ensures that the asset allocation remains aligned with your investment goals and your risk tolerance. To give you an example, back in 2020 to 2021, for myself, I was mostly invested in tech and video game sectors, and the allocation was pretty high, 15 to 25% per stock. I did not reserve much cash to sell options as well. So that was then. Now in 2022 to the present time, I changed my investment goals. I 
reduced my tech and video game sectors and allocated it into different stocks such as in the groceries, consumer discretionary, timber manufacturing and transportation and that's about 5 to 15% allocation per stock. Myself, I also invested in S&P 500 ETFs and I also reserves 30% to 40% of my portfolio for selling options. Number six, cost. Now consider the cost of investing in different types of securities or funds. For example, when investing in funds, usually the funds will charge an investment fee, which is also called an expense ratio. Now this means the cost you will need to pay per year to own or invest in the fund. For example, an S&P 500 ETFs like VOO have a low expense ratio of 0.03%. That means that every $10,000 that you have invested, it will cost you just $3 per year. However, other funds such as mutual funds, they might have higher fees. So do check that these fees may lower your overall returns. Number seven, tax implications. Now different investment types have different tax implications. And so do consider the tax consequences of your investment decisions. For example, if you are not a US citizen and you want to invest in US stocks, you may be taxed 30% of your dividend income. In other countries such as Japan, they do charge a capital gains tax if you're sold your stocks at a profit. So in summary, we have discussed the various factors that should be carefully considered when building a solid investment portfolio that is aligned with your financial goals and your risk tolerance. But of course, um, before you start investing in stocks, do invest in knowledge first. Besides on learning how to pick the right stocks, do also educate yourself about the proper portfolio allocation. And well, perhaps if you don't have much time to spare, it is also recommended to consult with a financial advisor. Now that can help to determine the best investment strategy for you. And that's it folks. Now go forth and invest my friends. Until next time.